Welcome back guys. In this video, I want to talk about BL Heli 32. Uh, we're going to be talking about that, what's the difference between that and BL Heli S. We'll talk about these specific ESCs, which are the Wraith 32 ESCs, as well as a few others. And towards the end of this video, I will show you guys how to get the BL Heli pass through working to make changes to the ESCs and show you how to get DShot 1200 running in Betaflight. But right off the bat, I do have to say that BL Heli 32 is brand new. It's brand new to me. It's brand new to everybody. So there's not that much information out. I want to tell you everything that I have found so far. Um, but, you know, once it, it's not even fully finalized yet. Once that happens, then a lot of the stuff I say in this video will be outdated. And I will be deleting this video and redoing it once new information comes around. So if you are watching this video, look at the date and also look to see if I do have any newer videos by looking in the description below and I'll leave you a link to my BL Heli playlist. So first up, what is BL Heli 32? Well first we had BL Heli and that would be for like uh, your one shot 125 ESCs. Then we got BL Heli S which was multi shot and D shot. As I said a thousand times before there's no such thing as a multi shot ESC, there's no such thing as a D shot ESC. Both of those are just protocols used by the, the ESC, and BL Heli S ESCs can run both. So that's why I'm always reiterating, whenever you're shopping for ESCs, don't even look to see if it's, it's labeled as a multi-shot ESC or if it's, it's a D-shot ESC. All you really want to look at is, is it BL Heli S? Because it can do both, no matter what they say it is. Same thing applies for BL Heli 32. BL Heli 32 can run D shot, it can run multi shot, and from what I've read, it can even use one shot 125 and uh, maybe even one shot 42. Now, why would you want to use all those other protocols instead of D shot? I, I don't know. I would just recommend using D shot because D shot is better than multi shot and the other protocols. So, once again, when you're shopping for ESCs, don't even look to see if it's a multi shot or D shot ESC because it does not matter. Just look to see if it's BL Heli 32 because you already know it can do both. You also need to know that uh, there's a new BL Heli suite. Uh, this is the BL Heli suite that you know, we've, we've known and have been using for the longest time, but now there's a BL Heli 32 suite which looks something like this. And to download it, you want to go to blheli32.com click on the download tab where you will find it there. As far as what ESCs are available, uh, the first official BL Heli 32 ESC was the Wraith 32, which we have right here. They also have another version, the uh, Wraith 32 Plus. The difference is the Wraith 32 is rated for 35 amps, 2 to 6S, and the Plus is rated at 50 amps, 2 to 6S. I pre-ordered these about a month to a month and a half ago, and I just received them about a week ago, and I've been running them for a week. I haven't experienced any problems whatsoever, uh, and that's with DShot 1200 protocol. You're probably eyeballing the price right now. They are quite expensive. Uh, part of this is going to be due to, well, supply and demand. Any new product that everybody wants, uh, they can almost name their own price. Not only that, but also read from uh, the... Oscar Lang, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He has awesome write-ups. He also has a YouTube channel. Great guy. I love his content. Um, but in this article, and by the way, I'm going to leave you links to all these websites in the description below so you can read all of this if you want. But in here he mentions that BL Heli 32, they went from open source to closed source. I know some guys feel different about open source and closed source. Uh, there's a lot of opinions, but uh, I'm not going into that right now. That's a completely different subject. But because it is now closed sourced, uh, these ESC manufacturers, they have to basically pay, I don't know if you'd call it a tax, but pay a fee to license the ESC. So that will also add a little bit to the price of the ESCs. Now since I pre-ordered these a month ago, or a month and a half ago, uh, uh, some more have showed up on the market. For example, uh, FPVmodel.com has released the uh, X-Racer Quadrant then the uh, BL or DYS ESC and I, I found these on quite a few websites and I know the Wraith, there's actually even more, here we have the iPika I've also seen a 50 amp iPika and there's the, actually even more than this that's not labeled on this website so what makes BL Heli 32 better than BL Heli S ESCs? Uh, well it, it's a variety of hardware and software changes 
Hardware-wise, they've uh, you know bumped it up to where they can run much faster. Every source and website that I've read so far says that they can run at least DShot 1200. Uh, now, what does this mean for the future, and how fast can they run? I couldn't tell you yet. Right now, in Betaflight, you can run DShot 1200. I don't know if they will do what's needed to make it run even faster than that. Like I said, we'll have to wait for more information. But I am interested in seeing what the race flight guys do because uh, with race flight, you can run the D shot protocol, but they state that it's uh, it can't keep up with multi shot speed wise. And you know, everyone wants race flight for that 32k, 32k, but D shot can't run 32k, at least with BL Heli S ESCs. So I'm interested in knowing what they do with these new ESCs. Will they now be running D-Shot at 32K? Uh, I guess we'll have to see and you know wait and find out. Also with this specific ESC, I don't know if this will be all BL Heli 32 ESCs or not, but for this one, they've added in a current sensing resistor, which is what you need for a current sensor. And this can mean one of two things, or both. For one, because it can sense current, They've actually tied that into the uh, new Beale Heli 32 suite, and we now get. So let's go ahead and get this thing connected. And we see the current protection here where it's fully adjustable. Now, I, I've personally set mine to 160 amps because these ECs are rated at 35 amps. I'm assuming that the burst rating is at 40 amps, at least, maybe 45 amps, couldn't tell you. So I'm just going to play it safe and do 40 times 4, which gives me 160 amps. What does this mean? This means that the ESCs potentially could last longer because they might not fry as often or as easily. Not only do we have current limiting, but we can uh, limit the acceleration. Now I'm not going to explain uh, what all this does. Instead, if you come to blheli32.com and in one of these tabs you will find the operation manual and it will explain what every single feature does. For example, here's maximum acceleration. It's saying that the uh well, I'll let you, I'll just let you pause the screen and read this if you want. We also see that uh with the Beale S ESCs, we had for the motor timing low, then medium low, medium, medium high and high. Now you can set the exact degree of timing that you want. Anywhere from auto, well, I guess we have one degree to 31 degrees, as well as auto. I've tried auto, I've tried playing around, uh, just setting it to a uh, you know, predetermined degree. Still trying to figure out what I like the best, and I would recommend you do the same. We also have more settings that are more configurable. For example, the beacon delay. Before it was one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, so on and so on. Now you can actually pick the exact minute and second that you want for your delay. For PW and frequency, this can be set between 16 kilohertz and 48 kilohertz. Right now, I'm just using it on the default setting, but I do plan on trying out 48 kilohertz probably tomorrow. So sorry I can't give you too much information on what the best settings are because, like I said, all this is brand new to everybody and we're all still trying to play with the settings and figure out what we like the best. Now back to this current sensor. What else does this mean? Well, uh, thanks to the RC Group forums, which uh, I'm going to leave you a link to right here. And so far we're up to 38 pages. The first 34 pages... Um, well, because this ESC was the first official ESC, and uh, if you pre-order this ESC from myairbot.com, they actually sent out pre-production versions to the guys that did pre-order it fast enough. The th first 34 pages is just about the pre-production ESC, so you won't get too much information. Um, starting at about page 35 and up, that's where you will get the newer information. But back to what I was saying, um, one of the guys on here, I'm going to flash his name on screen because I want to give credit to where credit is due. But they have found that uh, a couple pins on ESCs is actually a transmit and receive pin, which I suspect would be used to tie it into a UART port on the flight controller. What this could mean is instead of using a PDB with a built-in current sensor or a flight controller with a built-in current sensor, maybe we could actually get our current readings directly from the ESC. 
And that's about as far as I want to go talking about uh, the, the ESCs, what they can and can't do. Like I said, more information is coming out every day. But for right now, what I will do is show you how to actually use them now instead of having to wait. Sort of just like I did with the D-Shot protocol in ESCs, you know, whenever they were brand new. So if you are watching this video in the future, you can completely ignore what I am about to say. If we go into beta flight, you want to look at what is the newest version of firmware. At the time of recording this, it's still 3.1.7. The next version of firmware is not going to be 0.8. It's going to be 3.2.0. If you want to use the BL Heli pass-through to be able to make your ESC changes in the new BL Heli 32 suite, then you need the 3.2 firmware. So I will leave you a link to this website. Once you come here, you want to click on the newest uh, yeah, you could call it like a nightly build uh, version of 3.2 and it's going to be right at the top here and they're constantly updating this. I mean you can see the times that it's been updated. So whatever the newest version of firmware is just click right here and then you want to click this tab here and you're going to download it. After you download it you do have to extract it and put it into a folder and I uh, have a folder right here. Well, that, that was the download I extracted it and then you get something like this then go into Betaflight, uh, Firmware Flasher, load firmware locally because you downloaded it, find the folder where you downloaded it, and find the hex file for the flag and chore that you have, and then flash firmware that way. After you flash firmware, you can check to make sure that uh, it flashed successfully by typing version, and we see that I am now running 3.2.0 on my flag controller. After you've done that, the BLHeli pass-through will now work. You can use the new configurator and, and BLHeli32 suite to make your ESC setting changes. The last thing you have to do is actually get DSHOT 1200 working. If you go to configuration and click this drop-down box, you will only see up to DSHOT 600. And I suspect in the future, once they do an update to the configurator, because you have to realize Firmware on your flag controller and the configurator is two completely different things. So once they update the configurator, I would imagine it will show up in this drop down box. So for those of you right now watching this before everything has been released, go to CLI. I can't remember what it's called, so I'm just going to type get, and press enter. I know it's like motor PWM something, so let's try to find it. Here it is right here, motor PWM protocol. So I will do set space motor underscore PWM underscore protocol space equals space, then type DSHOT 1200 in just like this with no spaces. DSHOT 1200, press enter. If you typed it in just right, then you'll get this message. If you misspelled any letters or left out any spaces, then you'll get unknown command. But once you get this message here, then just type save and press enter. Then reconnect, go to configuration, and you should now see DSHOT 1200 showing here. And that is going to do it guys. Like I said, I will uh, redo this video once more information comes out and everything's kind of settled down and set in stone. But thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.